How's it going, my evil residents? Today we're going to take a look at Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and find out just how much plot armor Bell has. We will also be covering the other playable character, Alex Mason, as we covered him in the previous video in this series, which you can find a link to in the card at the top right. This is the second episode in a series on the Black Ops games, but I do have many other plot armor videos about the Resident Evil series if you want to watch any of those. That said, you can find a link to the full plot armor playlist in the description. We're going to tally up every time Bell and Mason should have died, their injuries, and how much it would cost in US dollars to treat these injuries. Every time they die, I will also be charging them $3,000 in funeral expenses per death as this is the average military cost without any sort of coverage. The medical bill costs I list will also be without insurance as that would make the numbers fluctuate even more than they already do. We will also be tallying every time a character survives something out of sheer luck, usually due to the writing of the game. I'll count these by giving out chief tokens which are named after the main character of the Halo series, Master Chief, because one, his main trait is that he's lucky and two, I just really like Halo. I won't waste any more of your time. Let's get right into the video. Starting off on the first mission with Alex Mason. Let's help him ring in the new year. Light him up, Mason. Right at the beginning here, Mason immediately in the first gunfight of the game gets a chief token because 5.56 five, rounds, which most assault rifles used, especially in the 80s and now, it's the most standardized round and most likely what these people are using, they can pierce bodies. And it seems like none of these people have body armor on, so taking someone as a human shield is not a super fantastic idea. Mason should have been shot or killed here. He's very lucky that literally nothing happened to him so he gets a chief token hurry up <laughs> nowhere left to run Kasim. we can work so hard Switching over to Bell for just a second here. Bell is the person, spoiler alert, in the car that is shot right here and uh, two gunshot wounds to the chest. Likely surgery to remove the bullets. This is a pistol, so they probably didn't go through. So they had to remove the bullets, stitch it up, treat them for bleeding, go to the hospital and things like that. So $180,000 easily, especially with the knowledge that Bell goes without treatment for at least a little while while they search the wreckage of the plane and stuff. So yeah, I think this is a pretty safe $180,000 for the two gunshot wounds. Switching back to Mason. Mason gets two chief tokens for surviving this ridiculous plane explosion and multiple car collisions. You could argue way more. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be nice. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna be nice to Mason. I'm go only gonna give him two chief tokens. But right here, I'm gonna charge Mason his first death because he's literally crushed by this plane wing. This would kill him. Plane wings are very, very heavy. This would be like getting a wall falling, like a metal wall falling on top of you. And it's falling from way higher up than a, a normal like wall on your level would. Mason 100% should have died here. Charging $3,000. Funeral expenses, drop them. Right here, moving on to character creation. I'm gonna engage in a little bit of friendly fire and make Bell non-binary so that I can give Bell a chief token for being LGBTQ plus in the 1980s. Bell, it's time to wake up. It's great time. We are also going to be skipping the next mission, Fracture Jaw, because it's a planted memory. Bell didn't actually go through any of this stuff, so there's no plot armor to be had here. I'm just letting you know that I'm skipping it, so if you complain that I skipped it in the comments, I did skip it. The reason is because this didn't actually happen to Bell. She didn't have to cut me Next up, when Bell is sneaking around Berlin and he's talking to the informant here, Bell is very, very lucky that this bathroom has a window, much less an open one. Now, I've never been to Germany, but at least here in the US, most bathrooms do not have windows in them, much less open windows like this or windows that are unlocked. I, obviously, I can't speak for German bathrooms because I don't live there, but as far as I know, they also do not have windows like this. Bell's also lucky that it's large enough for them to fit through, that it's unlocked, all that jazz. So I'm giving Bella Chief token. 
when bell is searching this guy's apartment he gets knocked out if you don't know from the black ops 1 plot armor video getting knocked out doesn't work like this if you're knocked out for more than like 30 seconds to a minute you get permanent brain damage permanent brain damage is very very expensive to treat and he's knocked out for many many minutes so i'm charging him the same amount that i charged mason every time he got knocked out in the last video for many many minutes $150,000. After Bell is captured and, and the person we talked to earlier gets killed and betrayed by the person that we saved, uh, fuck this person. Bell is lucky that he didn't just get shot. Like the guy stops to like look up at them like, oh my god, what's happening? Oh my god, there's people invading my uh, warehouse. This is so scary. Instead of just shooting him, why didn't you just shoot Bell? I don't understand. I, 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 I literally don't understand. Chief Token I snapped a very nice picture of Woods right here. Choose your target. Over me. Not a fucking word, Bill. And then at the end of this mission here, after fighting through the Anytown USA section, they are very, very lucky that this APC doesn't kill them. And then later they get in a very similar APC to escape and they smash through this massive metal door. I looked it up. Okay. This is a BTR 80 APC. As far as armored vehicles go, these are pretty small and pretty lightweight. This is a blast door for a vehicle bay. There is no way, especially with how little bit of a drive up they have that this APC could just slam these doors open. A tank probably couldn't even do this. No way. They get a chief token. Not happening. Swapping over to Mason for two quick things for this side mission here. Mason falls high enough off of the zipline flat on his stomach that he would probably crack his head open and die. It's nearly impossible falling face first to not hit your head against something. Mason 100% would have cracked his head open here and died. I'm going to charge funeral expenses and Mason's second death of the game. And then at the end, when they are getting their extract from the helicopter while airlifting out that big rectangular thing, Mason and Woods are very, 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 very lucky that this thing didn't slam into anything and knock them off, that they didn't get shot because there's very minimal cover on this thing, weren't hit by an explosive, a single grenade or Semtex would end them, an RPG would absolutely decimate them. They're just incredibly lucky all around here. So they get a cheap token. Well, just Mason. I'm not covering Woods. If you want me to make a separate video, by the way, covering Woods and all of the games please do let me know i would be down to do that but it would be black ops 1 cold war and black ops 2 all combined into one video since i already have all the footage i could do that if you are interested in that video please do let me know in the comments switching back to bell to go into the kgb headquarters Elevator conversation always gets awkward. Next up here, when Bell and Adler are copying the information to the floppy disk and these soldiers breach the vault, these soldiers had them dead to rights. These soldiers suck ass at their jobs. I think they should have died here. Like, it's absolutely ridiculous that they didn't die. The doors, they breach the door. They don't throw any explosives in. They just smoke them. I, why don't these soldiers suck? I'm charging funeral expenses. They should have died here. The only reason they didn't is because these soldiers are literally incompetent. It's ridiculous. And then here, when they get out of the elevator in the Pity 2 bulldozer outfits, I'm going to charge to death for this. You know why? Because C4 exploding to you this close, even 
with this equipment on would probably kill you because of the shockwave. C4 doesn't detonate in a big fireball like this, really. It kind of does, but it's very brief and it's not the main threat of the c4 the main threat of the c4 is the very aggressive short range shockwaves that it makes they're maybe like four feet away four to six feet away from the c4 they would be in that shockwave range and it would affect their internal organs and knock them back and hurt them severely so i'm going to charge three thousand dollars for this if you don't think they should have died here feel free to remove this just subtract three thousand from the final total this is honestly the most debatable one in the whole list but i really don't think they should have survived this. this is a literally stupid bell is just being silly and trying to uh trying to not live anymore Switching over to Mason for that one free Romish mission. This soldier had Mason dead to fucking rights with a shotgun while Mason was breaching and he didn't shoot him. He just didn't shoot him. I know it's in slow motion, but Mason's gun wasn't raised or anything, but the soldier had his gun trained on the door, didn't shoot Mason. Mason should have died here. I'm charging funeral expenses. What the fuck? Why are all these soldiers in this game so bad at their jobs? Anyway, that's the only one for this mission. Back to Bell. Confirmed. On this mission where they are trying to find Perseus lab, there are two instances where Bell is shot by an RPG and nothing happens. He's just shot by the RPG and nothing happens. One happens in the middle of the mission and it's kind of blinking you miss it. The other is literally scripted. He's shot by an RPG and he's just mostly fine. He calls over to Park, which is the canon choice. He calls over to Park and hooks her up and they fly away. But <laughs> what? I have no words for this. If you're shot nearly directly by an RPG, you're fucking dead. So I'm charging two instances of funeral expenses here, so $6,000. Next up, it is revealed that Bell was brainwashed by Adler for about a month from the time the first mission takes place to when we first play as Bell. The dates in the game confirm that it's about a month. So I'm charging therapy and such to rehab his brain and unbrainwash him and remove implanted Vietnam PTSD. I'm charging $200,000. This is less than I charged for Mason and Reznov because, you know, they went through it for many years and a couple of years respectively. It's it's ridiculous. They're, this guy guys <laughs> bell's brain is probably mushed by now holy crap uh yeah i'm charging two hundred thousand dollars i thought this emp was complete bullshit but it's actually not this actually makes a lot of sense i know it looks super sci-fi and kind of weird but no this is just a nuclear emp if you air detonate a new right it creates an EMP at certain yields, which will turn off electronics and fry them. The, it kind of depends on the um, size of the of the nuke that goes off. Sometimes it fries them, sometimes it just shuts them off. Kind of depends. For this instance, it seems like they just did the lower yield nuke that would just fry the electronics, and they had a certain amount of time before they, you know, fixed them to call out and fix the AA guns and stuff like that. So this actually is real. This is a thing that could actually happen and a thing that has happened before. So it's not plot armor or anything like that. I thought it would be. I thought at the very least there would be some nuclear radiation, but the shockwave of the EMP, the microwaves, don't cause any severe or dangerous radiation at these distances. So this is fine. I know I'm rambling on about something that's not even plot armor in the slightest, but I thought it was plot armor and I did a bunch of research and it's actually not. So I figured you guys would also find that interesting and learn a little bit about nuclear EMPs. You know, just casual nuclear EMP information be sure to tell all of your friends about nuclear EMPs and what you learned today. And then right here at the end, well, right before the end, there's one more cutscene that we're going to cover. Bell survives a carpet bombing. In fact, all of these motherfuckers survive a carpet bombing. 
Mason and Woods, understandable. They weren't like in the direct path. But you were right there with Adler. Both of you survive a carpet bombing fucking unscathed. What the fuck? <laughs> what? They just gloss over this and then the game fucking ends? This game ends so abruptly. I was genuinely shocked that this was the end of the campaign. I was like, what the heck? Anyway, I'm rambling. $3,000. Bell should have fucking died here. He literally got carpet bomb. Okay, he got carpet bomb. Why do I have to explain that? Next up at the end here, we're gonna end it rap big rap battles of history style, and I'm gonna let go decide if Bell gets a chief token or not, as both characters are confirmed to be alive for Black Ops 6, which comes out on October 25th. And you bet your ass I will be covering that game because what the fuck happened here? I wanna know what happened here. I wanna know who deserves this fucking chief token. I want you to let me know in the comments who gets the chief token here. Does Bell get the chief token or does Adler get the chief token or does neither? Let me know what you think in the comments. And when Black Ops 6 comes out and if this is clarified whatsoever in that game, I will leave a pinned comment saying who gets the chief token and update all of the numbers here for you. That's why when I ask you for one more, I hope you understand. It was never personal. Looking at our totals here, Bell comes out with five deaths, $545,000 in medical fees, and seven chief tokens. As for Mason, we are going to be adding three deaths to his total from the previous Black Ops game, as well as his five chief tokens that he got. This brings Alex Mason's totals up for the entire Black Ops series up to this point to $1.35 million. $1,350,000. Jesus Christ. If you want to know why that number is so high, I go watch the Black Ops 1 video. It's a good video. He has 21 chief tokens as of now, which he is rivaling second place in the series for with Leon Kennedy. And he has 16 deaths. Mason officially has the most should be deaths of any character I've covered in the plot armor series. Round of applause for Mason. He really knocked it out of the park here. GG Mason. Congrats on not dying 16 times when you should have, I guess. I'm going to pop up all the numbers for the series here, along with Hudson and Reznov. It's kind of crazy that Bell has such high medical fees in such a short game when all together, I think his missions add up to the amount of playtime I had for Hudson's missions in Black Ops 1. Black Ops Cold War's campaign is really short. Like, I was so surprised when I finished the game and I was like, oh, that's it? I thought there would be like two or three more missions. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous, but he does have a good amount of chief tokens over Hudson. His medical bills are higher, but his deaths are lower. So overall, I would say he has a little bit more plot armor than Hudson with the other fluctuating numbers. And yeah, Reznov's numbers are just Black Ops 1. I haven't covered World at War on this series. If you would like me to cover World at War, let me know in the comments. I am down. But next I'm planning to cover Black Ops 2, where I will be covering David Mason and Alex Mason. That's going to do it for this video. If you liked it, feel free to drop a like. If you disliked it, feel free to dislike it. But please do let me know in the comments why you disliked it so I can make these videos as good as possible. This will be an on-running series where I will be covering at least Black Ops 2 and Black Ops 6. I haven't decided if I want to cover Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 4. Black Ops 4, what the fuck would I? cover because it doesn't even have a campaign and black ops 3 has like the shittest campaign ever so not sure i want to cover those but i covered most of the black ops series that matters as far as campaigns go at least obviously black ops 3 is awesome but yeah if you would like to see more call of duty or resident evil plot armor videos feel free to subscribe we will we'll also be branching out to the tomb raider series maybe the gears of war series and i will definitely be doing a video on batman arkham asylum sometime in the future for the plot armor series we do have a discord if you would like to chat with other residents on the channel about cod about resident evil it's mostly resident evil channel like i have said many times i'm just covering other games for the plot armor series but feel free to come out and chill over there it's a good time you can lfg with people play games chat share memes stuff like that we do also have channel memberships up on the channel if you would like to support me in a more direct way obviously anything you do to like subscribe just even watching the video i greatly appreciate but if you want to go that extra mile you have my deepest deepest thanks thank you very much for even considering but uh yeah that's gonna do it for this video stay evil my residence